introduce Andrew. So my story with Andrew and his campaign and policies really starts probably where a lot of other people's uh, stories start, which was with depression. I found myself about two years ago in quite a state of uh, kind of dark depression about, I wasn't quite sure what, but not feeling very good about in general how things were going. And as I unpacked that a little bit, I realized that what was really at the heart of that for me was um, feeling a little bit hopeless about our future. And um, I have a 12 year old son, and so it's a very, the future is very personal for me, thinking about what kind of world not only are we leave, living, leaving for them, but also um, how we can try to minimize the suffering that potentially could happen as we um, continue to, to make some not so great decisions for ourselves, our nation, and ultimately for the globe. And so, um, so not feeling really great for quite a while, um, and really not seeing anybody out there that was just as deeply as concerned as I was, understanding how critical things are right now and how we're at this important moment to really shift things or to stay the course and potentially um, continue to kind of go down a wrong path. So the next thing that happened for me was I got introduced to Andrew Yang. Um, <laughs> Most of you, you probably, um, I first heard about Andrew Yang from a friend, um, and that's obviously a big part of how grassroots uh, campaigns like this work. So the person who introduced me to Andrew Yang, his name is Chauncey Strode, um, he's a great family friend, and he actually has been, I think, instrumental in probably converting 50 or 60 people in Portland to Andrew. He's been a huge championing um, person in that, so I wanted to give a shout out to, to Chauncey and all the work he's been doing, which is awesome. I think it's really critical as we're all here understanding how one person can can have such a massive effect on changing people's understanding of, the, of what can happen and, and how Andrew really is the answer for taking us where we want to go. So the three things that I think for me that stand out about um, about Andrew that are so unique and so important and critical to this time and why I started to feel hopeful and um, actually excited about the future as I listened to more interviews of him and, and read more about him. The four things that I see about him um, that are key is, the first is how he comes from such a deep place of empathy. Um, everything that he does, all of his policies, really stem from this idea of a human-centered um, e economy, human-centered policies, he understands and, and wants to understand humans, what their problems are. And I think that uh, this is a critical piece to actually being able to create solid policy. If you know what the problems are, you actually might be able to solve them. Um, the second thing that I think is really interesting and actually pretty groundbreaking about Andrew is the breadth and depth of knowledge he has about economics. And he knows the numbers. That's right. That's right. And I think um, you know what's what's really alarming for me is how few politicians actually really understand economics, understand at a micro, kind of macro level, and a micro level, what levers to pull to get the incentives in place to actually have things working for us rather than against us. And Andrew knows that. He sees it. It's you know the policies that he comes up with, the freedom dividend, uh, Medicare for all. Uh, democracy dollars. These are things that he understands. These are what can actually change the tide. Um, of course, he also is one of the few politicians out there that understands technology, like really understands technology. And we know uh, that most of the, the problems and most of the solutions that we're going to face in the near and, and kind of long-term future is gonna have technology involved in it. And we can either be okay with not understanding it and having leaders that don't know anything about it and being you know, kind of behind the game, or we can have somebody who not only understands it but is thinking about not just the, few, the technology of today but the technology that's coming out in five to 10 years, what the implications are of that, how to help guide it, 
Um, and Andrew really is the only, only uh, candidate that I've heard actually talk about this in intelli like intelligent ways, which is super, super exciting. And the last piece that I see him um, really doing some amazing, kind of having some amazing skills in is understanding human psychology. And right now we have a, a president in the White House that understands the worst part of human psychology. He understands how to create anger and fear and anxiety and how to push those things. But what I think is really wonderful about Andrew is that he thinks about human psychology from the other side. He thinks, how can we inspire? How can we unite? How can we make people feel like our community and our, our, our government actually has our back? How can we feel, you know, he talks about this idea of moving from um, a mindset of scarcity to a mindset of abundance and what happens when you do that to a whole community. If everybody's feeling good and positive and isn't stressed about money and isn't scared about their health, um, what can happen? How can we all actually start to look up and tar tackle the really big problems that we are about to face, that we're in the midst of facing, really, and that are only going to kind of get more and more um, significant over time? So, in my mind, these four things, empathy, economics, technology, human psychology for good, this is really kind of a perfect storm that is all in Andrew Yang and no other candidate that is running for president. to be here with you guys. I'm looking forward to seeing you at the fundraiser and um, directly after this. So this is Daniel. I am with uh, one of the people here in Portland, Oregon who introduced Andrew Yang on the stage today at the Portland, Oregon rally that we had. It was a great rally. And so go ahead and what is your name? And My name is Stacey Rutland. I'm a co-owner of a user experience design firm here in Portland called Particle Design. And I um, was turned on to Andrew Yang's campaign about six months ago from a family friend. Started to do some research into it and um, very quickly uh, became one of his most excited followers. Um, and in early May, we went up to my, some of my friends and family. We drove up to Seattle and went to the, um, to the event that was there, the rally. We showed up early, so we got to volunteer and meet people on the campaign, and I realized just how much of a grassroots uh, campaign this is. I realized that um, if I wanted to get involved, I could get involved to whatever degree that I um, was interested in and had the kind of bandwidth and capacity for. So I reached out to the campaign immediately, and I said I'd love to have um, to help support any kind of fundraising here in Oregon. If, if you know, Yang is in intending to come at some point, and so I started working with the campaign to, to figure out when was the right time for him to come and how could we support him. Okay, that's awesome. So Seattle was only like May 3rd. Yeah, I know, because right. I was there. Yes. I was there recording. Yeah. So it's pretty recent that you really got involved. In. So what about Andrew really, I guess, um, persuaded you to get involved? What about him really resonated with you? So I think, you know, I talked about this a little bit today at the, um, at the rally, but I think the most important thing, Andrew has a really interesting combination of um, both authenticity and earnestness, um, kind of coupled with intellectual rigor that I actually find very um, exciting and interesting. So um, it's very rare to, to come across a... Uh, a politician who not only knows how to connect personally with people um, and understand how to have a conversation with people on whatever level or you know they're at, but to also be able to um, infuse that conversation with what could be construed as very complex ideas, but in a way that's incredibly palatable, incredibly easy to grok for kind of anybody. Um, and at the same time, his ability to really connect with people and to understand what's important to them and to use that as the basis for his decisions around what kind of policies he wants to um, institute and what's important to him is, uh, is really pretty amazing and very exciting. Okay. Well, we're all very excited about Andrew Gang. We're on the yes, Yang Gang, obviously. 
but uh, you actually are in tech, your company. So tell me a little bit about your company because it's very interesting. What I heard from your sister I talked briefly with. So just yeah. tell me a little bit about your company. So um, Particle Design is, um, we're in our ninth or tenth year. We started off as a as a, another company and I want to, and split. So in the last few years, we've become Particle. And what we do here is we work with organizations and um, and companies to and you know from kind of startup to large corporations to help them design really the products of the future. So we're, we work with a lot of um, companies that are well established that are trying to change up change up their product, um, kind of the, the products that they're showcasing or what they want to be rolling out on their roadmap. Um, but we also work with startups like Version Hyperloop One to help design their full digital experience, both the tools that they need internally, but also the external tools like their rider apps and things like that, um, to, um, you know, Jaguar Land Rover, to Samsung, to... Um, so your sister was saying that a AI was a part of what you... It's a big part of what we do. Yeah, and helping define it, helping to, you know, user experience... Um, historically, the role that user experience for people who aren't, and it's totally fine if you have no idea what user experience means, at a, at a layman's terms, what we do is we make sure that the designs for products are based on what users actually need. So what they need, but also what would what kind of solution would really actually help. So for a long time, that wasn't at the center of design. It really wasn't until... I would say probably the iPhone um, or um, uh, really kind of Apple in the early aughts helped shape some of that up where people realized like, oh, if you have a really amazing experience, people will flock to you. And so there is a little bit of a shift that happened where UX became really important. But AI and like big data and machine learning really hasn't... It's so new that we find our, we find that the industry is actually taking a few steps back. It's almost kind of like the 80s and 90s for kind of the, the PC and computing world where engineers are making decisions about what should be happening in the space of AI and big data and machine learning and um, aren't really consulting people who um, really aren't consulting the users. And so we're finding this kind of schism right now as they're rolling out what we consider kind of the initial world of AI um, without really considering what the implications are for humans. Yeah, so what I'm getting is because of your experience in the tech world, what Andrew's talking about, technology and automation really uh, resonated with you knowing that that is a problem for the future and he's one of the only people out there I feel that's ready to solve that problem, right? It's, it is certainly, I mean, working in the industry, I, I know when somebody's talking bullshit and when somebody's talking real. Right. And he's talking, like, the, the, when he's talking about what's happening in technology, it is, it is as, an, as, as an expert, really. I mean, he's understanding the complexities of it. He's understanding the implications of it. He's thinking um, near term. He's ter thinking long term. And, um, and that's really, from my perspective, kind of unheard of right now in politics. I don't see a lot of people um, recognizing or understanding that. And there's that for sure because that's my that's my expertise. But for me, actually, the thing that's most important that, about Andrew is um, is the empathy and human side of him, and the ability c to connect, and the ability to understand um, the desire to actually help people. Like that is something that is lacking deeply in our. Um, political system and so for me there's all of these other things the technology and that's important because somebody if we don't have somebody who understands what's going to happen in technology there's no way for us to solve for it, those issues and there's no way to harness it for, for good right I mean to, to really make sure that we're that technology is improving us as a human species right that's what we're talking about right now and I think that he's one of the few people that I really the only person that, that understands that. But there's this human piece that is really important. And the ability to... The fact that he really cares and that he understands the, the, the problem and he understands how 
you know, how to, what levers to pull to help our economy move towards minimizing the wealth gap rather than continuing to increase it. Like, those are actually the things from a very personal and deep level that are way more important to me. Um, and the thing that makes me want to sit here with you today and talk about why I've invested hundreds of hours to make these fundraising and rallies and things like that happen. It's It really is the human and like kind of empathy level. The technology is just a really awesome, awesome addition to what he's offering. Okay, well, as part of the Yang Gang, we're hoping that Andrew goes all the way, of, of course, but thank you for doing this interview with me. Absolutely. Go ahead and subscribe and share this video, and let's get Andrew Yang to the presidency. Thanks, everyone. Absolutely. Thank Have a good night.